Hi everyone, today we're going to study discrete random variable. By definition, a real valued function is defined as random variable whose domain is the sample space corresponds to a random experiment. The variable capital X is said to be a random variable if X is defined. So we write X colon S R O R as a function from the sample space S for some random experiment to the real number R. Let us see this example. In the experiment of tossing a coin two times in succession, the sample space is S equals HH, comma, HT, comma, TH, comma, and TT. H is for the head, while T is for the tail. Suppose capital X denote the random variable of outcome of heads. So we write x of hh equals 2. x of ht equals 1. x of th equals 1. x of tt equals 0. This is now our answer. Take note that on one sample space, more than one random variable can be defined. Let's have another random variable y. Let y denotes the random variable of outcome of tails. So we write y of hh equals 0 y of ht equals 1, y of th equals 1, and y of tt equals 2. This is the final answer. Another random variable example is here, the z. Let z represents random variable of difference of head and tails. Then we write Z of HH equals 2. Z of HT equals 0. Z of TH equals 0. And Z of TT equals 2. This is our answer. Today, we're going to study expected value, or this is also called mean of capital X. Let capital X denotes a discrete random variable. The expectation of X exists if the sum, summation of absolute value of X multiplied by P of X is finite. Thus, expected value is given by mu. This is the mean. And this is equal to the expected value of X. Now, this is equal to summation sub I of X sub I times P of X sub I. If we expand this, this is equal to x sub 1 times p of x sub 1 plus x sub 2 times p of x sub 2 plus 
up to the last term x sub n times p of x sub n. In general, this mu or the mean equals the expected value. And this is equal to the summation of capital X when capital X equals A times capital P of capital X equals A. Where this P of capital X equals A is the probability of capital X equals A at the given sample point. In simple, expected values are simple averaging, as in statistics. Expected value is the mean of random variable x, or simply expectation of x. Expected value is also known as first moment of the random variable x. How to construct distribution and obtain expected value? Let capital X be the random variable of sample space capital S. The capital X of capital S equals x sub 1 x sub 2 up to x sub n and the corresponding probabilities are capital P of capital X equals x sub i. The construction of the probability distribution is given by the following table. We have here two rows in the table. In the first row is the capital X equals X sub I. The elements for this row is X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3, up to X sub N. The second row is for probability. The P of capital X equals small X sub I. So here correspondingly we write here we have P of capital X equals X sub 1. Next, this is P of capital X equals small x sub 2. And this is capital P of capital X equals X sub 3. And this is up to the capital P of capital X equals small x sub n. The probability distribution should satisfy the following conditions. We have here two conditions. The first is the probability for capital X equals small x sub i must be greater or equal to zero. Second condition, the summation where i equals 1 up to n of this probability of capital X equals X sub I equals 1. We shall have examples on the next video. In this video, we're going to see some examples how to calculate expected values. Let's have example one. If a fair coin is tossed twice, then find the expected value for getting heads up. For our solution, let us write the sample space. The sample space formed in two tosses of a fair coin is S equals HH, HT, TH, 
and T, T. Now, let capital X be the random variable that denotes heads up. Let us see our table here. In the first row is for the X, and we write here the number of heads up from 0, 1, and 2. For the second row, this is now the probability of the X. For the 0, there is one sample point here without the H, and this is the T, T. So there is one sample point over the total number of sample points. So for the probability, we have here 1 over 4, or we say 0 0.25. When head is 1, there are two sample points here corresponding to that, which are HT and TH. So for the probability, that will be 2 over the total number of sample points. So that is 2 over 4. And we write 0 0.5. When x is 2, meaning 2 heads, there is one sample point here, hh, corresponding to 2 heads. So the probability is 1 over 4. And that is 0 0.25. So now, the expected value, that is the E of X, is the average. This is also equal to the mean, and we write in symbol the mu. Sometimes, this is also called first moment. For the formula, we write like this, summation of capital X times P of capital X, meaning we're going to multiply the x with the corresponding probability. And then, we will get the total. So we have the 0 multiplied by 0 0.25. And we write it here. Plus 1 multiplied by 0 0.5. Then plus 2 times 0 0.25. Using our calculator, the final answer must be 1. This is the final answer. Example 2. If a fair dice is rolled twice, then find the expected value for getting sum of the two rolls. Let us first write the sample space formed in two rolls of a fair dice. And here it is. The smallest is 1-1, one, one, and the largest is the 6-6. Six, six. Now let x be the random variable that denotes the sum of two rolls of the fair dice. Let us see our table down here. For the first row, this is the row for x. The smallest sum is 2, and the highest sum is 12. For the second row, we are going to write the probabilities of each of the x respectively. For number 2, the probability is 1 over 36. For number 3, the probability is 2 over 36. And for the sum of 12, the probability is 1 over 36. Now, for the expected value, we're going to multiply the x with the corresponding probability. So we have it here. 2 multiplied by 1 over 36. It's here. 3 multiplied by 2 over 36. It's here. So we continue the process up to the 12 multiplied by 1 over 36, and it is here. Using now our calculator, the final answer must be 7. 
This is the final answer. Example 3. Ahmed tossed two fair coins. He wins six Omani reals if two heads occur. Five Omani reals if one head occurs. And one Omani real if no head occur. Find the expected winning for Ahmed. For our solution, let us write the sample space. So we have here the S equals HH, HT, TH, and TT. We let X be the random variable that denotes Ahmed's winning based on a coloring of head. For our table, in the first row, we write here 6 Omani Rian. This corresponds when 2 head occurs. Next is 5 Omani Rial. This corresponds when 1 head occur. And 1 Omani Rial if there is no head occur. For the probability of the X, for the 6 Omani Rials, that corresponds to 2 heads. In our sample space, there is one sample point here that corresponds to two heads. So that will be 1 over 4. That is the probability. And we write here 0 0.25. Next, for the 5 Omani real, it corresponds to one head. In our sample space here, there are two sample points that correspond to one head. And those are HT and TH. It means probability is 2 over 4. And that is 0 0.5. For one Omani real that corresponds to 0 head. We have here one sample point, the TT, that corresponds to that. So the probability is 1 over 4, and that is 0 0.25. Now for the expected value, we multiply this 6 by the 0 0.25, and it is here. Next, 5 times 0 0.5. We write it here. Then plus 1 times 0 0.25. 25. We write it here. Using now our calculator, the final answer is 4.25. We don't forget the currency. That is the Omani Real. So 4.25 Omani Real. This is the final answer. Today, we're going to study variants of random variable X. In a statistical point of view, expected values are used for understanding of random variable. Sometimes, it is observed that expected values are exactly same for two different probability distributions. In such situation, it is difficult to compare the two different situations. In this case, standard deviation is the most appropriate statistics that is calculated by obtaining the variation in the random variable. This type of challenge is resolved by calculating average risk variability that is not unique using variance. 
variance alerts about the variation in the data. Let us study now variance and standard deviation. If a random variable x have a finite mean or average and we use the symbol mu, then variance of x is defined as rho square. This rho square is the variance equals e of the square of the quantity capital X minus mu. Now, the standard deviation of x, this x is the random variable, is the rho. And this rho is equal to the square root of the variance of x. In symbol, we show this square root and the variance of x. Also, using the formula of the variance here, the standard deviation is now the square root of this quantity, which is the E of the square of the quantity capital X minus the mu. Now let us see some properties of variance. Number one, the variance of K times X. This is equal to K square times the variance of X for all real number k. Second, the variance of the quantity x plus k equals the variance of x for all real number k. Third, the variance of x is greater or equal to zero. And this is equal to zero if the p of the quantity x equals k equals 1 for all real constant k. Fourth, the variance of x equals the e of x square minus mu square. Remember this formula. This is the formula that we are going to use later in the next video to solve for the variance. This formula is also known as second moment, where x is the random variable. We shall have some sample problems in the next video. In this video, we will see some sample problems on how to calculate variance and standard deviation of random variable. Let us have this example one. If a fair coin is tossed twice, then find the variance and standard deviation for getting tails up. Our step one is to write the sample space. Here we have the S equals HH, HT, TH, and TT. We let capital X be the random variable that denotes tails up. Let us complete the table in step two. So we have here x and p of x for the rows. For the x, we write 0, 1, and 2 that corresponds to the number of tails. For the p of x, for the 0, we write 0 0.25. We can see that there is one sample point here that denotes no tails up. So that is 1 over 4. That's why we write 0 0.25. For 1 tail up, 
we have two sample points. Those are HT and TH. So that is 2 over 4 in the probability. That's why we write 0 0.5. And for the two tails up, we have one sample point that correspond to that, the TT. And that is 1 over 4. And we write here 0 0.25 in the probability. Step 3, let us now calculate the average or the mean. And sometimes this is also called first moment. So for the E of X, we multiply this number X with the corresponding probability. So 0 times 0 0.25. Then plus 1 times 0 0.5. Plus 2 times 0 0.25. Using our calculator, the final answer here is 1. For step 4, let us solve for E of x squared. In solving this, we need to write one more row. The row for x squared. This x squared means we're going to square each of the numbers in the row x. 0 square will be 0. 1 square is 1. 2 square is 4. Then, let us multiply the x square numbers with the corresponding probability. So we have 0 times 0 0.25 plus 1 times 0 0.5 plus 4 times 0 0.25 Using the calculator, our answer here will be 1.5 Now we are ready for step 5 to calculate for the variance then later the standard deviation For the variance, the formula will be E of x square this value we derive from step 4 minus mu square. This is the mean, the value that we get from step 3. Substituting the corresponding values, we have now 1.5 minus 1 square. This 1 square is simply 1. So 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5. So this is the variance. Then we solve for the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. So we substitute this value here. We have the square root of 0 0.50 and the answer is 0 0.7. This is the standard deviation. These are the final answers. Now example 2. Let two fair dice are tossed. Find the variance of the random variable that assigns the maximum numbers occurs on a pair of dice. Step 1. Let us write the sample space. So we have here the sample points from 1,1 one, one going down up to 6,6. Six. This is the sample space. Now, let capital X be the random variable that denotes maximum of the number capital X, AB, in rolling a pair of dice with total 36 outcomes. Step 2, let us now complete the table. The first row for X, second row, for the P of X. For the X, we write the numbers from 1 up to 6. Now, for the probability of X respectively, for number 1, there is one sample point here where the maximum number is number 1. So, probability is 1 over 
36. For number 2, there are 3 sample points here where the maximum number is number 2. So probability is 3 over 36. For number 3, there are 5 sample points here where the maximum number is number 3. So probability is 5 over 36. Going to number 6, there are 11 sample points here where the maximum number is the number 6. So the probability is 11 over 36. Now step 3, let us compute for the expected value or we say the mean. So we multiply each of the x with the corresponding probability. So we have 1 times 1 over 36 plus 2 times 3 over 36 plus 3 times 5 over 36 plus 4 times 7 over 36 plus 5 times 9 over 36 plus 6 times 11 over 36. Using our calculator, the value here is 4.47. Now for step 4, let us compute for e of x squared. In our table here, let us add another row for x squared. For x squared, let us square each of the numbers of the variable x. So the 1 becomes 1. 2 becomes 2 square, we write here 4. For 3 square, we write here 9. 4 square is 16. 5 square is 25. 6 square is 36. Now for our e of x square, let us multiply each of the numbers for x square to its corresponding probability. So we have 1 times 1 over 36 plus 4 times 3 over 36. Then plus 9 times 5 over 36. Up to the last one, 36 times 11 over 36. Using the calculator, the value of step 4 is 21.97. Now we are ready for step 5, that is to compute for the variance. Our formula, E of x squared coming from step 4 minus mu squared from step 3. Substituting the corresponding values, we have 21.97 minus the square of 4.47. Simplifying this square, we have 19.98. So the difference 21.97 minus 19.98, we have 1.97. 99. This is now the variance. This is the final answer. Today, we're going to study expected value and variance of continuous random variable. Let us see some introduction here. We have this graph of f of x. This is the graph. We let capital X be the random variable with the image set capital X of capital S defined over the interval. 
we know that the random variable, the capital X, is between A and B. And each probability, P, of X, where this capital X is between A and B, is well defined. Suppose a function from R to R is a piecewise continuous function. That is the probability of this capital X from A to B is the area. And the area is this portion. Under the curve, X axis and the interval of X from A to B. Thus, area is the probability of capital X from A to B. The formula is here. The definite integral from A to B of the function f of x dx. Here, capital X is continuous random variable. And we see these two conditions. The first is, f of x must be greater or equal to zero. Second condition, the definite integral from A to B of f of x dx equals 1. Now let us study expected value and variance. Let's begin with the expected value. And our symbol is still E of capital X. Sometimes we write this as the mean as symbolized by the mu. This is equal to the definite integral from A to B of X multiplied by F of X dx. Now the variance. We write the symbol var of capital X. Sometimes we write this as rho square. This is equal to the definite integral from A to B. X square times f of x dx. Then minus the mu square. Again, the mu is the expected value. For the standard deviation, we write sd of x. This is simply the square root of the variance. So we see here the symbol, the square root of var of x. Let us see this example. Find the expected value and variance for the distribution. f of x equals 1 half of x when x is between 0 and 2. And f of x is 0 when x is otherwise. Let's begin with the expected value, E of capital X. And we have this formula. Substituting the corresponding values, so we have now the definite integral from 0 to 2. These are the limits. And we got this from this portion. The x here we copy here multiplied by the function f of x. Our f of x is 1 half times x. And we can write it as x over 2. Then the dx. Simplifying this, we multiply x and x. So we will get x squared. And this denominator 2, we will move it outside the integral symbol. So we have now this 1 half times the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. Let us now integrate the function. In here, we are going to use the power rule of integration. And here is the formula. So the integral of x squared becomes x cubed over 3. And this one half will just copy down here. Simplifying this, we multiply the 2 and the 3. So we have x cubed over 6. And then 
let us evaluate this with the limits of integration from 0 to 2. So we have now 2 cube over 6 minus 0 cube over 6. Simplifying further, the second fraction here will come down to 0. So 2 cube over 6 will get 8 over 6. And the lowest term is simply 4 over 3. This is the expected value, or we say this is the mean. Now, let's go to the variance. The formula is here. Let us now substitute the corresponding values. So we have the definite integral from 0 to 2. x squared, we simply copy here. The f of x is that x over 2. dx is copied down here minus the mu squared. We got the value of mu from the expected value. So we write here 4 over 3 and the quantity is squared. Let us simplify the integral. So we have x squared times x. That would be x cubed. Again, the denominator 2 becomes a fraction or a constant that we will move outside the integral. So we have now 1 half times the definite integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed dx minus, we simplify now, this is square of 4 over 3. We have 16 over 9. Let us now simplify the integral. Using the power rule, the x cubed here becomes x power 4 over 4. Then we copy the 1 half down here. Minus the 16 over 9. Let us simplify the fractions here. The 2 multiplied by 4, we will get x power 4 over 8. Let us now evaluate this with respect to the limits from 0 to 2. So this value here would be 2 raised to 4 over 8 minus 0 raised to 4 over 8. The second fraction here will just be 0. Now, the 2 raised to 4 is 16. 16 over 8 is 2. So all the groupings here will be 2. Then minus 16 over 9. The difference here will give us 2 over 9. This is the variance. This is the final answer. Again, expected value is 4 over 3 and the variance is 2 over 9. I hope you learned something from this video. See you again next time.